US Air Force General Timothy Ray, head of Air Force Global Strike Command, discussed the use of the hypersonic AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon, as well as the hypersonic air-breathing weapon concept, as a way to keep the B-1B bone in the air. Viewers may note that B-1Bs are scheduled to be slowly decommissioned. General Ray told Air Force magazine, my goal would be to bring on at least a squadron's worth of airplanes, modified with external pylons on the B-1, to carry the Aero air-launched rapid response weapon hypersonic cruise missile. Though internal storage was considered, Ray believes that the easiest, fastest, and probably most effective in the short term will be to go with the external pylons. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how hypersonic AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon could breathe new life to B-1B bone. Let's get into the details. This video is sponsored by War Thunder. If you are, like us, fascinated by military vehicles and technology, I recommend you give War Thunder a try. It's a military vehicle combat game which you can download and play for free on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. It has a huge variety of more than 1,200 playable aircraft tanks, helicopters, and ships from the 1930s to the 1990s, which you can take to battle on land, in the air, and at sea on more than 80 theaters of war. War Thunder's been kind enough to offer All Defense Updates viewers a special bonus, which will grant you a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship, and three days of premium account time for registering using our link in the description below. So take the plunge and join more than 20 million players from around the world. An object is said to be hypersonic once they exceed speeds of Mach 5. That's five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second or 3,836 miles per hour or 6,174 kilometers per hour. There are currently three methods being applied to make hypersonic weapons. The first is using a scramjet engine. The scramjet is an innovation on the ramjet. Ramjet engine can power flight to supersonic speeds, but scramjet can enable the missile to reach hypersonic speeds. The scramjet engine can power hypersonic cruise missile. The second is through the use of ALBM, or air-launched ballistic missile. As the name suggests, this kind of missile is ballistic in nature, but is launched from the air, unlike traditional ballistic missiles, which are launched from land or sea-based platforms. The third is using HGV, or hypersonic glide vehicle. In this method, the system is launched to extremely high altitudes using ballistic missile or an aircraft where it skips across the Earth's atmosphere. The vehicle then separates from the carrier and glides back to Earth towards its intended target, attaining hypersonic speed. Aero uses this approach and is actually an evolution of the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency's DARPA's, Tactical Boost Glide TBG, effort. As per DARPA, the system is expected to reach speeds of Mach 20 when it glides back to the target. Countries like Russia and China have been developing sophisticated layered air defense. These systems are difficult for traditional aircraft and missiles to penetrate. This is where hypersonic weapons come in. Their extreme speed and ability to fly in unpredictable paths give them a high probability of penetrating the air defenses. They'll be very hard to track, let alone intercept. It's to be noted that traditional ballistic missiles also reach hypersonic speed when they descend down on the target, but they follow a predictable, predefined parabolic path, which could lead to possible interception by anti-ballistic missile defense systems. Hypersonic weapons will be suitable for neutralizing well-defended strategic military assets. Russia has claimed that it has already fielded an air-launched ballistic missile named Kinzhal and has claimed that it has operationally deployed hypersonic boost glide vehicle named Avangard. China is thought to be pursuing hypersonic weapons as well. It's shown off mock-ups of its road mobile DF-17 as part of the October 2019 celebrations commemorating the 70th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. On June 12, 2019, India claimed to have test-fired a hypersonic weapon. In 
In 2017, Lockheed Martin won the contract to begin Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon or Aero, development. The company had stated it wanted to meet the desired production targets within three years. The U.S. Air Force had announced that it has conducted the first captive carry flight test of the AGM 183A Air Launched Rapid Response Weapon or Aero. The test was conducted by a B-52H bomber in June of last year. Testing and optimization of the weapon is expected to carry on till 2021. Will Roper, the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, said in a statement about the flight test, We set out an aggressive schedule with Aero. Getting to this flight test on time highlights the amazing work of our acquisition workforce and our partnership with Lockheed Martin and other industry partners. He added, we are using the rapid prototyping authorities provided by Congress to quickly bring hypersonic weapon capabilities to the warfighter. This type of speed in our acquisition system is essential. It allows us to field capabilities rapidly to compete against the threats we face. The B-1A was originally designed during the 1970s as a high-altitude Mach 2.0 capable nuclear bomber. However, President Jimmy Carter canceled the program on June 30, 1977 in favor of air-launched cruise missiles carried on board the B-52 intercontinental ballistic missiles and what eventually became the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit stealth bomber. This was done after it became apparent that penetrating Soviet airspace at high altitudes in a conventional non-stealthy aircraft was likely a suicidal endeavor. President Ronald Reagan eventually revived the Lancer program on October 2, 1981. However, the new B-1B was optimized for low-level penetration. Additionally, the aircraft was modified with new engine air intakes and other upgrades to reduce its radar cross-section. The resultant B-1B aircraft no longer possessed Mach 2 capability topping out at roughly Mach 1.25, but had much better survivability because of the stealthier profile. The B-1B is powered by four General Electric F-101 GE-102 afterburning turbofan engines. Each of these can generate 17,390 pound-force kilonewtons of thrust when operating normally and 30,780 pound-force or 136.9 kilonewtons with afterburner. These enable B-1B to have an excellent range of 5,900 miles or 9,400 kilometers and a service ceiling of 60,000 feet. The engine performance makes B-1B capable of hauling a lot of weapons. B-1B has a massive payload of 125,000 pounds, 56,700 kilograms, internal and external ordnance combined. It has eight external hardpoints for 50,000 pounds, 23,000 kilograms of ordnance, and three internal bomb bays for 75,000 pounds, 34,000 kilograms of ordnance. As per mission requirements, B-1B can carry a variety of ammunitions like Mark 84 general purpose bombs, CBU 87 and 89, and CBU 97 cluster bomb units, GBU-38 JDAM, AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile JASSM, to name a few. Depending on the exact size and profile of the Aero, the B-1B could theoretically carry 31 of these. Since the B-1B is not very stealthy, unlike the B-2 Spirit, it's vulnerable to the current crop of sophisticated air defense systems. This is where Aero will be useful since it can be launched from standoff distances without getting inside the engagement envelope of enemy air defenses. U.S. Air Force has around 100 B-1Bs, so this is a sizable fleet. If Aero's integration is successful, it will make this fleet a very potent aerial assault force capable of deep strikes. As per the changing dynamics, America is aggressively looking to field hypersonic weapons and Aero is in advanced stage. Hence, it's not a very long road. 
the US is lagging in the hypersonic weapons space, especially against Russia. But with considerable attention and funding being provided, it is expected to catch up quickly. It will be interesting to see the progress and how the tech matures over time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.